everybody. Um, I can't begin to tell you how devastating it is to go to edit these videos and you can't see anything. Um, but this is the giant Barbar's grave. I will voice over the video because that's not very good either. Um, it's a video I was going to discard, but I figure some wrestling fans and historians would quite like to see his grave. And I do take a lot of pictures, so I can kind of... Um, um, show you that the image is over the top so it's not this devastating it was kind of a cool view because i was kind of elevated up here and i point there to his grave you could see his grave it was a kind of a cool little visual walking down to the grave but alas this is overexposed and i will go through some details about the giant barber and uh tell you a bit about what I know this is about 45 minutes from Osaka on the train if you want to go I did make a little video about how to get here and how to find the grave I suppose you can kind of work it out when I'm walking but if you are if you do want to visit and you've got any questions please feel free to ask me you go to Agashi station I take a picture of the station because there was a train station and a train and a 7-Eleven all in view and I took a picture and I was like this is like the pinnacle of my trip in Japan 7-Elevens and uh, train stations right Giant Barber was born in 1938 just as World War II was breaking out um, he lived in poverty and he worked at a very young age his debut into sports would be as a baseball pitcher the giant barber was six foot six. Um, he's only just a little bit taller than me, um, only an inch. Um, he was a baseball player for five years. Ricky Dozan, the famous Ricky Dozan. Uh, this is giant barber's grave we're coming to now with the big shoes. I should have compared foot size because I'm a Size UK 14, American 15, so I've got a big foot. Look at that, they are giant, that's a lot bigger than me. <sighs> this is his grave. Um, I go to Ricky Dozan's grave on this trip. I have not, it was literally the last day I was in Japan. Uh, that one's near Tokyo. Um, and I've not checked the footage, it's probably much like this. Um, but I'll probably release it. There was a woman in that house up there doing a washing and I felt really awkward. Imagine if, I suppose in Japan, a lot of the graves were overlooked by houses actually. So I felt awkward, so I was doing all my talking, which I am now doing in post, in post. Um, but I was getting a bit irked, so I came down here to talk. Um, right, I've not sold you anything yet. Ricky Dozan found him, uh, recruited him. Um, because he was looking for successors and he started training in 1960 to be a wrestler. It was also the same year that he debuted. He was, he trained alongside Antonio Inoki, whose grave I don't go to because he is very north Japan. What's the furthest north Japan prefecture called? I can't remember, the one that gets cold. I'm probably definitely going back to Japan, so I might go there one day. Um, Japan's amazing. I recommend it. Um, right. Um, Barbar worked alongside Vince McMahon Sr. Vinnie Mac, the dad, the famous Vince McMahon Kennedy, who's often in trouble these days, I believe. And does he run WWF? Does anybody even know anymore? Who runs it? Nobody knows. But this is when it was the National Wrestling Alliance, the NWA. This is when, I'm not going into wrestling history here, but when all the territories kind of worked as one and the National Wrestling Alliance was the championship. Like, that was the one Ric Flair had and that's why he would do all the traveling because he was the world champion. So he went around all the territories and Andre the Giant would go around all the territories in these big monster heels. Um, that's why they were so impressive. So Giant Barber would have gone into these territories in America and been quite a, an attraction. Um, he 
So he worked on these American tours with Vince McMahon. He fought Buddy Rogers for the W. He, he fought Buddy Rogers. He also fought Bruno Sammartino in Madison Square Garden for the WWWF world title. And Bruno Sammartino was like the Hulk Hogan before Hulk Hogan. Uh, he had the world championship forever. He still got the longest reign. As long as Roman Reigns has got it, he will not have it as long as him. Although they'll probably try. Um, could be modern wrestling knowledge. I know bits. Um, but in 1966, he returned to Japan. And in 1967, he teamed with Antonio Inoki and he won the NWA International Tag Team Championships in 1967, which I think I just said. Um, which was a huge, huge deal. Huge moment. Um, in 1972, Barber and Ricky Dozan's two sons founded All Japan Pro Wrestling. And it's also the same year that Anoki found New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, in 1974, he beat Jack Briscoe for the NWA World Championship. He would also beat Harley Race for the same title. Two wrestlers that I know from this period, so I hope you do too. Um, he was also the first former NWA World Championship to be beaten by Ric Flair. He wasn't beaten for one of his 60 world titles. Woo! But Ric Flair did beat him. I always, In my head, Ric Flair lost a lot. <laughs> so it's nice that he beat people as well. I'm sure I'm very wrong, but every match I know of Ric Flair, I don't know how he gets the World Championship, he always seems to lose. Um, obviously, I'm sure that's very wrong. Um, Barber's reputation was one of the most honourable and honest promoters in the world. Um, he worked with all kinds of famous American wrestlers, who I'm sure you know, and I might even put pictures up. It said his handshake was as good as... A contract. Um, he would train some of the greatest names of the 1980s and 90s in Japan wrestling and he also worked alongside European and American wrestlers and he made All Japan Pro Wrestling the most highly rated wrestling of the early to mid 90s. Um, so when I was watching Scott Hall and X-Pac in a diaper match apparently All Japan is what I should have been watching well, alas, I couldn't even get WCW that one. Um, um, he died on January 31st, 1999. He died of liver failure, uh, resulting in complications from colon cancer. And on April the 17th of 1999, he, his, he had a public funeral at the Budokan, the very famous Budokan in Japan. I also do a video at the Budokan because it's famously somewhere where the Beatles played, which is a series that I sometimes do. I have hundreds of, well, I have literally four episodes that I've not released in that because nobody watches them. But I might put a picture of the Budokan. The beat was very famously played there. It was very controversial because it's a martial arts venue. Um, and it was the public funeral at the Budokan was a day before the championship carnival finals which is the biggest event that All Japan Pro Wrestling run. Uh, his funeral was attended by 28,000 people, and that included the whole roster of All Japan Pro Wrestling. He's known as one of the greatest promoters of all time. Uh, really got such a beautiful reputation as a man um, and a businessman, and he is a true le re wrestling legend. Um, he was voted Best Booker by the Wrestling Observer from 1989 through to 1991. Um, the Best Promoter, um, the same Wrestling Observer from 1990 through to 1994. He was posthumously inducted into the Pro, Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2008 and in 2021 inducted into the International Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. I'm sure he must be in the WWE Hall of Fame, but um, I'll do some research. I'll put on top if he was inducted into that. I'm sure he has been. Um, but yeah, this is it. Uh, horrible video to watch. I hope there's some somewhat interesting information and some half decent pictures. Um, it's about 40, 40 minutes outside of Osaka, 45. It's 
really easy to get to. I did make a video with some pointers on how to find the grave. If you can, uh, on a, if follow Google Maps, honestly, it, is, it does work. And if you need any advice, I can help you. Um, but thank you for watching. Ricky Doe's on grave will be a video in a few weeks. I can't promise it'll be any more watchable than this, but hopefully I can give you some information. Um, honestly, it's worse for me, the video quality, than you. I promise you, it's devastating. But thank you for watching. I hope you're keeping well on this beautiful, hot September we're having in England. Uh, all the best.